Iran's water supplies are under threat, its reserves depleted by waste and inefficiency, once fertile lands now drained and barren. Innovative solutions are at last being applied, but will they be enough? We sent reporter Gallery de Rabi from Al Jazeera's Earthrise series to find out. It's hard to imagine life without water. But in the Middle East, that's an increasingly troubling prospect. In this fragile region, water shortages have been linked to mass migration, drought, food shortages, and political instability. Here in Iran, years of stifling international sanctions have put pressure on an already deteriorating water management system. But as Iranians watch their precious bodies of water disappear and international restrictions ease, there's a new understanding that in order to survive, change needs to happen. Esfahan, the cultural heartbeat of central Iran. I'm here to meet global water expert Dr. Kaveh Madani. He's asked me to meet him along the Zayanda route, the river which gave birth to this ancient city. Hi, Dr. Madani. This is not at all what I was expecting. What happened to the famous life giver, the Zayanda route? Uh, for the past few years, we have been seeing it like this. A uh, few months of a flow every year, and the rest, this is what you get. It's officially a dead river. These massive cracks that we're seeing in this once flowing thousand year old river, this is a man made problem? Um, unfortunately, yes. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that nature had no effect on this. Um, we have exhausted the water upstream, and this is what we are left with. What is the water upstream being used for? Uh, mostly agriculture. Um, nationally, we use more than 90% of the water in the ag sector. Um, that's common in, in, dry, in the dry areas of the world where you want to produce food. Um, wherever you irrigate, <laughs> you run out of water, and that's a general rule. This is really a symbol of what is happening at a larger scale, at a national scale in this country. And what is happening right now? Rivers and lakes are going dry after, one after another, losing wet, we're losing wetlands. Um, we are seeing land subsidence, we are seeing desertification and declining groundwater levels, which is really sad. We have been determined to maximize our water use, to extract water from any source possible, move water from one location to another, and this is what we see as the results. This is what I call water bankruptcy. Do you see that? The sprinkler? Yeah. What's wrong with that? That's the problem. This is the mentality. This I mean, is we the don't symbol. we don't get it. Like look look at this. Like all around the riverbeds are, are green and we have a river which is gone. What a view. I can imagine when this was full of water, people must have just exactly. loved it. Exactly. It's just so sad. So what would you say are the root causes of this crisis? How do we get to this place? I generally think there are three main um, causes. One being the rapid population growth. Um, in less than two decades, the population of Iran doubled. The second cause is inefficient agricultural sector. And it has been very important for us over the years of war with Iraq and after that during the sanctions. 
it was natural to be really worried about um, food self-sufficiency and food availability in this country. And the third cause being, you know, mismanagement. Uh, water is also linked to so many other things. And unless we understand and appreciate these linkages, and this complexity, we cannot solve the problems. While many Iranians are grieving the loss of the Zayandarud River, there is a greater and more invisible crisis underground. I'm traveling into Iran's farming heartland to meet geoscientist Maryam Dehrani. She's investigating Iran's groundwater crisis. Over the past 50 years, Iran has extracted 70% of its groundwater supplies, mainly to support farming. The arid southwest province of Sirjan, which relies heavily on pistachio farming, is now running on empty. What do you have here? This is the city of Sirjan, and you can see here the areas which shows the uh, subsidence. So these are the groundwater depletion hotspots, is that correct? Exactly. What exactly is subsidence? وقتی که شما آب رو خارج می‌کنی در واقع این فضاهای خالی باعث افزایش افکتیو استرس میشه و کامپکت میشه should we be worried right now about the groundwater levels in Sir John yeah the aquifers lose their capability to capture the water so we have runoff we have flood and sinkholes can damage the roads the infrastructures so should we go find ourselves some sinkholes yeah of course does it all collapse all at once or is it over time? It collapses in one second. Oh, really? Yeah. So sinkholes and land subsidence, they're indicators on the ground of a much deeper problem. Yeah, you can see the farmlands opposite side of the road. They are connected. So when you uh, uh, extract the groundwater from one point, the groundwater level drops. People are overexploiting the water mm. and not paying attention to the, the aquifer underneath. In the past decade, 15% of this region's pistachio trees have died, forcing farmers to abandon their lands and homes. At this rate, more than half of Iran's provinces could become uninhabitable within 15 years, displacing millions. Five years ago, everything here was green. And it's all dried up in such short time. Yeah. Is this region is it able to support pistachio farms anymore? I, I think we can't because there is no more water to, to irrigate the, the farms. So what happens now? What do you tell the farmer and the family, like these people over there, we should see if they're home. What do you tell them when, when the water runs out? It's impossible. We can't do uh, anything uh, for, for these areas. What do you think? Is somebody home? I don't know. Salam. I'm, I'm, uh, it's very ter terrifying, I think. I think a chance all the time, how many injuries will she? I think the fear for Mariam is that this is just the beginning. That this entire iconic region might become uninhabitable, just disappear. Until very recently, pistachios were Iran's main export after crude oil, and the province which Sirjan sits in was one of the largest producers in the world, contributing to a billion-dollar industry. But now farmers that remain are struggling to survive without water. I've left Dr. Dehrani to meet a family still trying to eke out a living. <laughs> آب که نیست کارشون چه جوری شده؟ جور بچه هامون زندگی اون مشکل شده. ما اینجا به چه به چه جور زندگی بکنیم؟ همه هم ول کردن رفتن شهر تو شهرو. 40 50 سال قبل شما 3 متر زمینو میکنین میرفت پایین. آب قابل شور. الان خیلی خرابه. این منطقه رو هولوش 200 متر the water is completely contaminated because they've been digging so much into the aquifer. They've had salt water leach in from the nearby lake bed. It's not just lack of water, it's salt water entering the fresh water that they use for farming. Yeah. در اصل کم آبی کسری سوخته فلسفی وارد را مورد زندگی بکنم 
چون فقط کم آب Ten years ago, they had a nice diversity of crops, but as the trade in pistachio started really bringing in money and it was very profitable, everybody went and invested in pistachio farming. And now, the future is completely bleak because they've invested in only one crop. Many of them say that Iran should be more and more profitable. I can't tell you what I'm going to do. I can't tell you what I'm going to do. I don't have any money. I was going to be more profitable. I'm going to be more profitable. ما انتظار داریم از دولتمون کمی که کشو ورز میکنه بریم بریم شما فکر میکنی آینده این زمین چیه؟ اگه آب نباشی هیچ هیچ فکر یا هیچ کس نگه یعنی تا بیس سال آینده هیچ کسی جا نمیتونه ای بچه که دو سال داره بیست دو سال دیگه آب نداره سور چه بشونه ایران از کلیرلی فیسنگ ای هیوچ و انپرسیدنتی کرایسیس و بایدار گورنمنت سپورت ایس هرد تو سی اینی حوپ او رزولوشن I'm in Tehran to meet Mossume Ebtekar, the country's vice president and head of environmental protection. Would you say that Iran is currently facing a water crisis? Yes. Iran, like many other countries in the region, is currently facing water scarcity. We need to change the current water management and water consumption patterns in order to be able to deal with this Currently, the ag sector uses 90% of the water in this country. How are you planning to reform this industry? We actually started a project working with farmers, educating them, training them. Uh, about 300 villages are directly involved. How much do you feel that international sanctions have added to the escalation of the crisis that we face today? We had a lot of pressure on our economy and there was a lot of pressure on uh, producing more crops. We need to uh, take off the pressure, I think, from uh, our national uh, environment and ecosystems for a while and the lifting of the sanctions could help us in that regard. Many people were expecting big changes after the sanctions environmentally, but dust storms, air pollution, water scarcity issues are still all too common. Why haven't results come sooner? One of the reasons that we haven't been seeing those results coming very uh, quickly has been uh, the hurdles that we still have, in the, particularly in the banking system, and it seems that the United States is not playing its role and not fulfilling its responsibilities that it has in the agreement. Political conflicts shouldn't overshadow environmental cooperation, and it has. Although farming takes the lion's share of water in the country, Iran's tap water use is still 70% above the global average. Years of heavily subsidized water rates mean people haven't been brought up with a conservation mindset. In a country where half the population is under 35, the government and NGOs are tapping into social media to get the word out. But is it working? شاید آدم ببینه بگه اه چه جاله ولی فقط در حد یه لایک و یه نگاه کردن و یه شیر کردن میگذره موقع مصرف آبیش که اون پسته تو ذهنش نیست یه اپلیکیشن قطره قطره هست این بحران آبه که توش کمپینی هست که عضو میشن توش برای همین حمایت از بحران آب من فهم میکنم تأثیرش رو داشته تو این چند سال تأثیر داشته Unsurprisingly, those who really understood the power of social media and the image in this crisis were photographers. Solmaz Daryani and Meysam Mir Zendadel are two young photojournalists who helped bring global attention to one of the crisis's greatest victims, Lake Urmia. Once the Middle East's largest saltwater lake, it has now shrunk to 10% its former size. Located in the northwest of the country, it was a popular holiday haven. Today, it has been reduced to a few patches of incredibly salty water. This hypersalinity has triggered an algae and bacterial bloom that has transformed the once turquoise waters to crimson. I feel like I've landed on another planet. 
اولین بار که اومدین دریاچه ارومیه برای عکاسی کی بود؟ سه سال پیش من اومدم شروع کردم. اون دوستایی که همراه من بودن هم گفتن الان اینجا رو می‌بینی خشکه. قبلا مثلا تا این ارتفاع آب بوده اینجا. خشک شده. بعد گفتم چه اتفاق عجیبی افتاد. یعنی یه فاجعه است دیگه. تاس میگم باید یه جوری نشون بدم این اتفاق رو. شما فکر می‌کنین عکس‌های شما چه جوری این موضوع رو بزرگتر کرده و مهمتر کرده برای بقیه؟ چراغی بود که روشن شد واسه مردم که فهمیدن داره چه اتفاقی میکنه و وگرنه دولت میدونست و اینو میگفت سالها که خب آب کم هست صرف جویی بکنیم یعنی اگر مردم یه چیزی میشنون تا وقتی که اون عکس اون تصویر رو ندیدن اینگار باورشون نمیشه شما فکر میکنین عکس های شما یه فشار گذاشته رو دولت و مردم که بیدارشن به من امیدوارم که دیدن این اتفاق برای همه این نتیجه رو داشته باشه که آب یه یه چیزیه که بالاخره یه حدی داره تبعات دریاچه ولی فقط به جغرافی ایران محدود نمیشه یعنی این سونامی نمکی که ازش صحبت میکنن اگه خوش بشه کلن آره. دریاچه همه کشور اطراف رو مثل عراق مثل ترکیه اینا رو تحت شها قرم دید این نمکی هم همونیه که الان داشتون صحبت میدید این پودر هست This salt right here which appears so innocent, can absolutely destroy the farming industry around this land. If it gets into the soil, it completely dries it out, and it isn't good for people's health. So you can understand why this lake needs to be full of water so that this salt doesn't start traveling around in the wind. Solmas grew up around the lake and knows firsthand the impact of water scarcity. Her family used to run a popular guest house and rent pedal boats. Their lives were closely tied to the lake. این دریاچه است الان اینجا رو میریم میبینیم که خوش شده اولین بار یادتون میاد که حس کردین که یه چیزی خوب نیست اول که که بو زمان ده بو زمان پایز ناخری ده که در مسافر گل میرد و گرد کمی ده گرد ده بله دکیسی وارده چرپی وارده او دکیس سویون ایتین ده ایده دکیس ات ده قالدلا گرده گرده قالدلا دکیس ده قالده گرده او دیره جتمه ده که جدری از کی شما این مسافر خونه رو بستین؟ یعنی یه روز اتفاق نیفتاد شاید در از مثلا ده سال پنج سال اینجوری این اتفاق افتاد و یه روزی شد دیگه بستن شما پیش خود فکر میکردین این مسافه خونه همیشه تو فامیلت میمونی؟ وقتی یه چیزی رو آدم تا از دست نداده نمیدونه که ارزشش چی بوده مثلا ما الان دیگه خیلی برامون آب اثر گذاشته دیگه مثلا مثل اینکه مثلا خمناش شده میارد یعنی طبیعت دریا آدم دلشاد میکرد ناراحت نشین دریا که برمیگرده انشاءالله من چه رایم آتش دیم جلچه دایرا. تو دانم. شالله جلچه. تو تاب. از این بخش شروع کرده بودم مکاسی رو. کاملا انگار اون حالت مردگی و حالت از بین رفتن اینجا از همه بیشتر مشخصه. اگه یه چیز خیلی غمگینه برای شما و فامیلت چرا میایین همیشه عکسشو میگیری؟ همین ناراحت کنندگیش باعث شد که من از اینجا شروع کنم چون یه داستانی داشت برای گفتن که من فکر میکنم اون روحیاتی که اون حسیاتی که از اینجا گرفتم باعث شد که من مثلا به عکاسی علاقمند بشم اون عکس خیلی معروف شما که اون هنر پیشه و اکتیویست آقای لیانارو د کپریو که به همه پخش کرده روی اینستاگرامش از همین دورا بود نه؟ مثلا دقیقا همین جایی هستش که اینجا بوده که نمک ها و اون در... چوبا همش رو دیده میشن و وقتی اون عکس رو به همه دنیا پخش کرد همه واقعا داستان دریاچه ارومیه رو شناختن یه بود جهانی پیدا کرده و یه هوی انگار صدای یه تعداد آدمی که خیلی از خیلی وقت پیش تلاش میکردن به گوش دنیا برسونن یه هوی فهمیده شد Like Solmaz's family, many people living around Lake Urmia depend on it for their livelihood. 
an estimated 5 million farmers live in its vicinity. And that's why the government has pledged $5 billion to restore Lake Urmia over the next 10 years. I've met up with Ismail Ahangari, a community field worker who has embedded himself in these farming communities. He's been working on a pilot project funded by the government and UNDP, promoting farming techniques that help conserve water. دور بر دریاچه ارومیه چند تا صد مثل این هست؟ حدود 71 تاست که اینا همه در مسیر ورود آب به دریاچه ارومیه زده شده این صد بیشترین مصرفش تو بخش کشاورزی که این سیستم در سابق طبیعی بوده ولی الان که مصنوعی شده و دستی ما داریم آب رو بهش هدایت میکنیم راندمان آبمون بسیار پایینه 80 درصد آب تلف میشه مدیریت آبیاری برای اینا قابل لمس نیست نشون میده که ما خیلی خوب نتونستیم منابع آب رو مدیریت کنیم ما الان یکی از کشاورزای روستای گل که یکی از روستاهای نقد است میبینیم این کشاورز جزء اولین کشاورزهایی بودن که وارد پروژه استقرار کشاورزی پایدار شدن سلام آقای رحمانی خانم گلاره اینجا اینجا میبینم کدو دارین؟ بله هر سال کشت های بلگوی کشت رو تغییر میدن دیگه کشت هاشون یه سال گندوم یه سال کدو یه سال تو اونده رقم این یه تکنیک جدیدیه؟ بله گندوم کدو اومدن زایگوزی کردن هم آب کمتر مصرح میکنی هم یه راندومانی هم خوبیه من یه چیزی که از کشاورزا دیدم تکنیکشون رو خیلی دوست ندارن عوض کنن چرا بله. شما به زودی و به این آسونی میخواستی عوض کنی؟ ساعت آوا رفتم پایین هزینه بر بودن کشاورزی تو منطقه کشاورز وادار کرد این کشاورزی تغییر بده میشه به من نشون بدین این چجوری عوض کردین سیستم شما رو؟ بله الان با این لوله انتقال آب به راحتی انجام میشه قبلا لولهش به جوری بود؟ الان قبلا از اون جوی همین گیاه ها و چیزایی که تو این هستن مسیر آب رو کند میکنه دو اینکه آفتاب میزنه آب رو تبخیر میکنه پس آب هرون نمیشه نه الان تو این سیستم آب مصرفی پیرتش اومده پایین از لحاظ اقتصادی هم هزینش کمه پس این آب شیرینه؟ از زیر زمین اومده the new water-conserving farming techniques take the pressure off the farmers from drilling deeper and deeper for fresh water. This allows the aquifer time to replenish naturally and safeguards the groundwater for the future. الان توی منطقه کلن که شوازه به دنبال این راه رفتن که زمیناش نو سیستم بارانی تبدیل کنن. کرتی میذاشتیم آب میرفت، آب هدر میرفت، تفخیر میشد، حروم میشد. الان تو این روش بارانی اینجوری نیست راحت میتونیم چهل درصد پنزا درصد بگیم آب مصرفی هست شد ترجش خیلی برای شما زیاد بود اینا رو گذاشتن تو؟ نه اینا هزینه های بلا عوض دولتی بود کمک ب... بله کمک هزینه ها یه مقدار مزی به ما خودم گذاشتیم شما فکر میکنین که من هم مثل اینجا بارم بگیم مصنوعیم all the systems that the farmers have implemented here are helping to save water. If these systems were rolled out nationwide, it could really make a difference. هم راحتی کشاورزی می‌طلبه، هم محصول خوبی از نظر کیفیت و کمیت، هم از لحاظ اقتصادی هزینش پایین اومده. همش رو شونه کشاورزاست که ما رو از بحران آب بیاریم بیرون. نه همشون روی شونه کشاورزی نیست الان شهرنشینی ها میتونن در صرف جوی آب وقتی آب تاون بشه تنها واسه کشاورز هم نمیشه The project here in Lake Urmia may seem like a small step but it's an important start Iran has finally acknowledged the scale of the crisis on its hands and it is beginning to tackle it but if these hopeful starts don't lead to more action on the ground and soon, the entire region will face the prospect of even more loss and instability. One thing is for certain, this is a critical time for Iran. <laughs>